Okay, Paul, go ahead. Okay. Today is the 10th of uh, February, and uh, um, this is being uh, presented in, in the eye of a snowstorm. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, uh, 10th of February 2019. For almost but a few, everything is very confused when it comes to Trump, the Trump administration, and the global developments that are going on. Look at the Venezuelan situation. What is that? Look at Bolton and Pompeo and their anti-China, anti-Russia, anti-Belt and Road, anti-everything uh, rant. And their, you know, demands for uh, military interventions. Look at Trump's trade war with China and the trade negotiations which are supposed to be concluded in the early part of March. What is that? Look at the all-out assault on Donald Trump in the entirety of the transatlantic media along with the Mueller operation. What is that? Look at all the coverage of Trump. Look at all the coverage that Trump has surrendered to the globalists and all the stuff on QAnon and, and other websites and you know people very pessimistic. Gee, we believe in Trump. Look at he's selling out. You get all, you get this whole gamut of, of things being said. Look at all the coverage about Trump's uh, shooting from the hip like the Syria troop withdrawal, or he is a berserker, or he doesn't, he doesn't read, or, or he's erratic, he doesn't consult the experts, etc., etc., etc. He doesn't know what he's doing. What is that? Is that true? Every which way you turn, Trump is this, Trump is that. Then you have the partial democratic response to Trump on infrastructure with the Green New Deal, ending nuclear and fossil fuels. What is that? And why is that coming out now? Then you have Trump canceling the Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile Treaty, and the Russian government is saying uh, this has brought the world much closer to nuclear war. What is that? How do we understand that? Is Trump preparing to win a nuclear war? For whom would he want to win a nuclear war for? Lastly, is Trump just succumbing to the pressures, or is he simply just crazy? What I would like to do tonight is explore the deeper issues in this to see if we can find coherence. To find coherence, we must depart from the day-to-day -day headlines and look at governing structures in the world, how they are being challenged, and their response to those challenges. We talk about the new paradigm versus the old paradigm. Our society is, is it, our society, the society for the new humanist paradigm is named after the new paradigm. But how do we make a sense of what is going on? To do that, we must depart from the real from the, from, from the realm of this fact and that fact to the realm of fundamental governing structures. So I'll start with a uh, three-part article by Barbara Boyd. And in the first part, she deals with something called the Lord's Report, which discusses the policy intention of the empire. Uh, and then the Integrity Initiative, which is the implementation side, and then that is mapped on to the campaign against Trump. But, I'll, but, the, but those, two, those two aspects, the Integrity Initiative and the Campaign Against Trump, I'm not going to focus on because that's not the, uh, the, the import of what I want to uh, go into. But what's important in the, low re in the, in the Lord's Report, in their various in their diplomaties, they make it very clear and state very clearly that Donald Trump is a threat to two integral uh, aspects of imperial power. The first is called the international rules-based order. The second is called the special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom. These are the two pillars of the empire. The one, the ability of nations to conform to an international-based rules order regardless of national interest 
And two, the ability to use the United States as the enforcer of that rules-based order. This is the highest level of empire saying that Donald Trump is the main threat to this. What does that mean? So let's look at this international rules-based order from a, from a number of different standpoints. First of all, what is a rules-based order? We're not talking about a law. Uh, a, 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 we're talking about a rules-based order. Or what they mean in that context, a rules-based order. It means that the agreed-upon rules are the rules that have to be followed. This is an issue of consensus. This is completely contrary to the idea of national sovereignty, which is based on the inalienable rights of a people to promote their general welfare under the natural law of progress, or as someone like uh, Wilhelm Gottfried Leibniz or Benjamin Franklin or Lincoln would define natural law. Any rule of law based on some rules-based agreement is a rejection of any principle of, fun of fundamental uh, general welfare. It's a rejection of morality, it's a rejection of virtue, it's a rejection of sovereignty by its definition as being a consensus of the powerful. So the consensus of the power say these are the rules. And that's what they mean by a rules-based order. And if you violate those rules, then you are, you are violating the rules that govern the system. And it's those rules that are the empire. Which is how empires work. So how does something so monstrous and inhuman become universally accepted among the policymakers of the transatlantic region? Something which is totally at odds with the United Nations Charter that was influenced by Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the, and the uh, horrors of World War II. So this is, this is something that occurred in phases. The first phase that sets the basis for negating national sovereignty began with the Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, nuclear explosions. This led to a Cold War and the first rules-based system under uh, gover was governed by nuclear terror. It is nuclear terror that induced both the Western and Eastern countries of the divided world to give up their individual sovereignty to a system of blocks. The block of the so-called free world and the block of the Warsaw. And then who was in which block and what and all of that. Out of this came NATO, various military pacts, global systems which have nothing to do with national sovereignty but would have to do with this divide and continuous con con confrontation between these two blocks. Permanent war, permanent peace. That's not, that's a, that's a rule-based system. Why? Because if you are not in the block, eventually you had a third block of non-aligned countries that emerged. <laughs> But that's, but the point I'm saying is that you, you have this system based on blocks. And on the basis of that, you transform the individuals that lived in those various countries from being citizens of their countries, from being members of a nation, to being uh, anti the other block, or the other block being anti them. One of the most important features of this earlier rules-based order was the suppression of the proliferation of industri industrial technology, science, and techn I mean, repression of the ability of those countries which were not developed to ha have access to industrial technology and science based on the fear that they would develop the capacity to build nuclear power. So that nuclear fear was the governing raison d'etre that, uh, that, that controlled the system. In this context, a new 
financial rules-based order finally emerges in 1973 with the floating exchange system becoming a system that determines whether your country can develop. If you, def if you defend your country by not participating in the floating exchange system, you are denied access to international trade. If you don't, you get looted. This floating exchange rules-based order of the currency exchange markets then gets transformed into a secondary rules-based order around general agreement on trade and tariffs, NAFTA, etc., where nations cannot unilaterally act in concert with other nations based on sovereignty, but must submit to these trade rules that benefit no nation, but only benefit international financial and, and, and transnational institutions. Keep in mind the psychological cornerstone of the shifting rules-based order, which is in essence the empire, is the terror of nuclear annihilation. This omnipresent psychological terror infected deeply those born after the war. It contributed with the change of culture to, no, to a no future orientation that further undermined any concept of, of a nation, which is always based on a concept of the future. The next phase of the rules-based order development begins in the 1970s through the 1980s with the Club of Rome and the promotion of the need to reduce the world's population because there were too many people in the world and that all of the resources were going to be used up. Uh, our movement did a massive intervention at the Bucharest Population Conference, which was never nobody ever forgave us for. In that context, you have the rise of green ideology. By the time the Soviet Union collapses, you have the nascent beginnings of a new form, new form of terror. The terror of climate change, the terror of global warming. That becomes the new, the new terror. Not so you have two, two active terrors, the terror of nuclear war and now the terror of, of climate change. And from that emerges a new, a new rules-based order based on decarbonization, which is really nothing but an extension of the old nuclear terror system, but expanding it, uh, which is based upon uh, on generations of fear of science and technology that began with the fear of nuclear war. <laughs> so, that, so there's a carryover between the nuclear fear into the climate change fear. There's a, there's a direct carryover over, over a number of generations. Uh, an attempt to establish a rules-based order on, on, on limiting population growth was failed at the Cairo, UN Cairo conference in, 19, in, 19, in 1994. But they tried to turn, turn population uh, uh, reduction into a rules-based order to fail. This denuclearization and decarbonization rules-based order is most advanced in Germany where they no longer have, well, they will no longer have nuclear power by the end of the year. The prices of energy have skyrocketed in those countries which have imposed renewable energy resources and banned nuclear power, and uh, uh, there is a huge correlation between energy costs and, and declining living standards, life expectancy, and the industrial capability, which in Germany is, is, is quite far advanced which used to be the most industrialized, most technically advanced country in the world. The response to, tra to Trump's State of the Union message is the joint non-binding resolution in the U.S. Congress on which the Green New Deal is now being uh, promoted, which you know, uh, many people thought was a joke. <laughs> um, it is identical or worse than those that Germany has done and is doing. Keep in mind that a large portion of the European working class is now in rebellion largely over, this, over the lo loss of living standard and the environmental rules-based order. Donald Trump's refusal to, save the, to sign the Paris Accord is very important in this regard. The next new geopolitical rules-based order transforms out of the Cold War is based order that began to massively uh, uh, began to be massively funded. The idea of it began to be massively funded in the 90s 
uh, by people like Soros and many others, in which Tony Blair proclaimed as the end of the Westphalian system of sovereign nations. So now there's another rules-based order emerging out of the old rules-based order, which is the right to protect, i.e., I, I, the international rules-based system now has the right to intervene in any country where the people have a government which is not to the liking of the rules-based order. Under the, it's under the pretext that the people are suffering under that particular government. Now this is supposed to be the rules-based order that replaces the older Cold War-based order. This becomes the basis of the, everything from Iraq, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Venezuela, the color revolutions, all of it is, is, is part of this. A core personality along with Samantha Powers, who was very, who was very close to all of this uh, right from the beginning, is Christia Freeland, the, the foreign secretary, uh, Canadian uh, foreign secretary. All of these are unfolding of successive rules-based orders. So when the House of Lords says Donald Trump is a threat to the international rules-based order, and that international rules-based order can probably survive one administration of Trump, but not the second, what does that mean? It means the habits, behaviors, connections, mindset, sharing of intelligence, military planning, diplomacy, the very concept of we, which is in the special relationship, which has been growing ever since the end of World War II, which is approximately 70, uh, 78 years, of which Obama, which President Obama was the most total integration of his government with MI6 and the British Foreign Office and vice versa and Soros and the, the offshore financial system, they are very much still in operation despite the new president. That's what that means. From this standpoint, you can begin to explain this situation. So let's look at how to interpret some of those situations. The trade war with China. China learned how to play with, in this rules-based order and not get killed. Uh, they did this by going along with the West to allow them to exploit cheap Chinese labor, but a large part of the net profit from that did not we did not all go to the banking system internationally. Some of it went into the, the, the Chinese uh, uh, foreign reserves, which they could use to invest and get technology and so forth. And at the same time, later on, they committed, that, starting in the 1990s, they, they created a parallel uh, credit system for internal development. But many of the Chinese business people, many of the Chinese uh, industries are completely tied into the rules the existing rules-based order. Now Trump does not blame the Chinese for, for the fact that the United States has this massive trade deficit with China, which is really not the issue. The issue is that China accommodated to the rules-based order because there was nothing else. And that rules, international financial rules-based order, uh, the Russia also accommodated to. So, so when Trump says, we're going to have a trade war, we're going to put tariffs on, and now we're going to negotiate, what Trump is doing is, is actually attacking the rules-based order, but in so doing, he's also attacking China economically, even though it's, even though it, it's going to hurt China. Thus, Trump is tearing up the rules-based order of this type, and another thing he did was on January 31st, he signed an executive order, which for, is going to force everything that was related to any government project, infrastructure project, or anything from plastics to steel to whatever, to have to be produced in the United States. And any, all the countries that have agreements on all of this are going to be out in the cold. This is, this is huge. Trump is saying no more endless wars pulling out of Syria and Afghanistan. What's he saying? He said no more rules-based order of the right to protect. No more of these, uh, uh, yet Venezuela is a contradiction to that. He made fun of the Green New Deal, so no to that rules-based order. 
Then we come to the inter intermediate um, uh, uh, non uh, the intermediate nuclear range missile treaty. In pulling out of the INF treaty, is Trump also saying no more rules-based system based on a balance of terror? In other words, sovereign nations have a right to overcome hostilities of the old order based on mutual benefit. But the balance of terror is not is actually not part of that. Trump is saying he hopes Russia and the US will become economic partners and will from there on get rid of all the nuclear weapons ultimately. Get rid of the whole balance of terror by implication. But when you get rid of the whole balance of terror, you're getting rid of the whole nuclear control by through the terror of the annihilation of nuclear weapons on the population of the world. Is that where Trump is going? However, it is true that it is not believable. It is not currently believable that that's where Trump is going. And the reason being is that as long as Bolton and Pompeo personify his cabinet, Russia, especially Russia, will not believe that even if Trump is sincere, he can't deliver. And therefore, it doesn't matter. We're headed towards a nuclear war. So the question is whether Trump can deliver. That is a non-settled question. If you can get rid of all the rules-based orders, what do you replace it with? Well, obviously, one to promote sovereignty of nations and natural law, the natural law of progress. But how is that going to work? If Donald Trump is indeed the enemy of the international rules-based order, then having a financial collapse while he's president would be handing him the opportunity to eliminate the rules-based order based on that system. So, 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 so there's going to be great hesitation to f collapse the banking system in the middle of the tr uh, Trump administration. So this is where we are, a work in progress. Very few, unfortunately, understand what we just went through. There is confusion and more confusion. But I think this perspective from the standpoint of the Lord's report is that Donald Trump is their deadly enemy. When you combine this with the Belt and Road challenge to the rules-based order, well, uh, then the various rules-based orders, those, those two have to come together. Trump's challenge to the international rule of law and the Belt and Road. But ha that hasn't happened. So our activities of our movement is very much connected to this. And the meeting in Vietnam is also key to this. And Xi's meeting with Trump coming up, whether it's in Vietnam or elsewhere, is also very important. Because whatever they discuss, whatever agreement they come to, is probably not going to be within the context of uh, uh, the international uh, financial rules-based order that has been in existence increasingly through these trade agreements and through these uh, uh, various things. So we're, entered, we're entering uncharted territory. And, there, and it will probably have significant negative effects initially economically in many parts of the world. So, but why, why why is Trump doing this? Because, and that, this is something that you have to think about. You have to think about why is he doing this? And I have my own reasons. I have my own opinion. And you might have yours. But, but the fact that he is considered to be the principal enemy of the international rules-based order and its, and its system of power based on the special relationship is enough for me to say that he, he has a different idea of how the world should be. So I'll stop there. Thank you.